everybody. I'm back again. As I promised, today we'll uh, go through Orange for sports betters and uh, we'll make a step-by-step -step guide uh, on how to build AI models. Um, it will uh, assume that you don't have any clue how to use um, Orange uh, or Excel. So let's go through it. So we start by going to my last video, as you can see here. Uh, I'm really glad um, that many of you uh, comment, positive comments, most of them. Uh, but actually there are some, as you can see here, of this guy. He says you try to make an orange data mining model based on this data set. The way you did it will never work. Try again. <laughs> Those are really funny comments. Uh, so uh, that prove that not you don't even uh, what's the whole video but you don't have a clue about what I'm talking about so I'm gonna prove this guy uh, by making here online that uh, it is possible of course so let's go to the Google series that we have over here so this is the Google series that I, I provide for you um, with every date stats as we said if you go here on the right side you get like an average of um, of the stats of the of the goals so this is the average of uh, the totals and here is the average of uh, the margin so uh, what we can do here so how we can start is that you can easily come here uh, like download it in excel sheet and after you download it you can just copy it to your desktop uh, we can open it as an Excel file. So here you see that it comes uh, in a format, in a table format. So what we want to do for now, we'll just show this example um, for every sport. But if you want to be more precise and have better results, you need to go from sport to sport. So I just delete those slices over here. We don't need them for, for the example that I'm talking about right now. So what we want to do here is that uh, we need, uh, as we said, this includes the five, the last five matches. This is the score and the, uh, the status for the last five matches. But on those matches, uh, the last matches included, so we don't want to use the numbers, the matches that have scored. So what we can do, uh, we can we can just. Uh, Clear it over here. Yes. Come here, um, and we need to just unselect the blanks. So then we can come here and delete all the values, all the rows that have scores. And then we can just unfilter and stay with what we have. So there are enough matches for our example. So what we can do now is that we can delete the rows that are above, that are no use for us. So right now we have a table with a date time. So those are going to be our um, metadata. Uh, then we have, we need what you need to do in order to, to be able to, to gather some matches is that you need to uh, every day do this, download it, uh, fill it, so you download in the morning, no scores, and at the end of the day, you just come in here, you click over here, and then you just copy the score, you write 50, 81, 50, and then 81. And every day you need to do this, and then uh, as you download every day, you just go under it, and you just uh, add the rest of the games uh, so at the end you're gonna have if you read something like six seven thousand um, let's say uh, matches or even more you can start about six seven thousand ten thousand so the more uh, matches you have with scores the better so this is how we can build um, our training data and then after that we use a the training then you can just download every day what i have in here and put it in your software and it will make predictions you will not have scores but you will come up with scores so let's go back so as you see i've done this for you i have another file uh, 
we can open it here. I've gathered some days of data. So you see it's the same table. It's 3,583 uh, matches. So you and um, you see if we go to scores, there is no black blank value. And then if we go to data, we need to go to remove duplicates, as you can see here, uh, unselect all and then date time, because every day the software gives uh, same matches sometimes. Uh, so we, you don't have in your tra you don't want to have in your training data the same match. So we just pick date time and I don't know really home in the way. Uh, so I click OK. There are no duplicate uh, values here because I made it before. But this is really important if there are duplicated values to eliminate those. So what we need to do here, uh, we have all this metadata as we said to home and away, then it's the score, uh, but we don't want to use it in our uh, training features. And here we have all the data that are presented in the Google Sheet. Uh, here was the margin average and here was the over under average. So those two uh, columns are the ones that we uh, check with those two. Uh, so what we want to do, we want to have like a target data, so the question uh, from, from one of you was how we can um, predict the line. So we need to have, um, let's say, a real margin, one column, and then we can make another column uh, real um, total maybe. <clears throat> so here, at the real margin, what we can do equals if uh, not if let's just do go to score one minus score two and then this is the real margin and then the real total will be equal to score one plus score two plus two up here it's really easy. So this is the final result. So this is the column that we're going to use to predict the line, and this is the column that we're going to use to predict the total. Uh, okay, so let's save this over here, close it, and then let's open Orange and see how we can use it. Okay, so this is Orange. The first thing we need to do is that we need to click on File and then load our Excel file. So this is going to be the, the training File and then we're gonna have like a prediction uh, orange file. Uh, so what we can do here, we need to find in our desktop, we can find the training Excel file <coughs> and then load it. So you see that it is loaded. Uh, but what we need to do, then we close it, we need to just drag on the right and use this edit domain. This is really important because if we have extra training data, uh, so if we update this Excel file, uh, the, the features may change. So we always want to have them correctly applied. So the country should be text because this is metadata. The sport should be text. Date and time should be always this time, date time thing. Uh, all the others are numeric features and you can see those are text. So we click on apply. And anytime something is, comes here, it will be corrected with this edit domain. So what we need to do after that, we need to select what columns, select columns, so what will be used as feature and what will be used as target and metadata. Um, so what we need to do is that we need to, so it, the, the software is kind of smart and it's, uh, understand what it is what so but we need to fix it by ourselves and um, so what we need to do right now is that we need to take all the features that are coming here uh, and then first we need to predict we, we need to have the real margin so we need to predict the line uh, so we use this number as training and then it will be trained and then we will predict be predicting that number and here is the line 
that is being scraped in not all the matches, but in some matches it will be there. Uh, for now, maybe we don't need it, but when you we have the prediction, we need to have it here so we can just um, compare those two numbers and see if it's a value or if there is value for us or not. Um, okay, so we have all the features that you can see here, and then we have our target uh, feature. Uh, so we close this as well. And then what we need to do is we need to rank those features, which is really important. So this is how you judge if the feature has value for the target that you already have over there. So we just write rank. And you see what are the important features over here. So you see that the best feature that we have is the average margin. So the one, the number that we use to compare with the line. Now it seems that this is our best uh, feature for the prediction we're looking about. And then there are some other features. Uh, you can see uh, here is the most important one. Let me see how it goes. The draws are not that important, uh, as you can see here. But they help a bit. It's not like we can uh, take them away. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can remove them. You can have like less features. But for now, let's uh, let's go with that. So here is the ranking which is relevant for us, but it's really relevant for the training. Um, what we can do afterwards is that we need to split the data that we have. So how we do that, we use the data sampler. So if you see here, we have 3,583 uh, matches. Um, so we need, if you open data sampler, you see that it will um, separate, it will take a sum, like 50% of it. Um, and the rest of this, so 2,509 uh, will be just training data. Uh, and the rest of it, we'll use it to test uh, if our model uh, works uh, correctly. So what we can do after this data sample, I think we can take this and put it a bit over. And then we can uh, start uh, using... Uh, so let's... Start using our models. So if we here, look here on the left, here are all the models that you can use. So let's suppose that you have no idea what uh, uh, they do. Let's start with this constant. Click on that. I like to put it here above it. Then CN2 rule, calibrated learner, KNN, tree, random forest. Maybe you can make it smaller, so everything fits in here. Um, gradient boost, SVM, linear, logistic, navy bias, uh, ADA boost, and then curved neural networks to have a gradient. So this is uh, orange. So how do we use those? We have this data sampler that is like 70% of our data, and we put it in this constant thing. And here you can see it's like the data sampler is like 70%. Um, so we load the sample data into every classifier. You see here that this classifier is not working, but why it's not working? You click here and it says it needs a categorical target, so it just this is not for us. We want linear um, calculations here. Uh, then we take this to KNN and we do this for every classifier. You see the logistic regression, naive bias, all those have problems, so it's not, we cannot use them. Let's bring those a bit closer. Okay, so we've loaded our training data to our classifiers, and now we need see if they score well or not. So what we can do, we need to start from here, from the classifier, and create um, a test and score, uh, this one over here. Um, if you click here now, you see that nothing is in here, but you need to take from the sampler, you need to put the data in here, click on the test and score, 
and this is going to trust on the test data but there is no test data right now uh, you need to click here it will take this 70 percent from the data sampler and will give us the numbers you see like this is a really bad the r squared needs to be uh, bigger the bigger the better closer to one uh, but now this is the cross validation that we're doing with the 70 percent of the data and then what we can do is that we can also have it from a data sampler to the test and score but then uh, you see here that this is the sample data and this is the test data so if we click here it will be the remaining data that will be the test data so this is um, what we need to make in order to have the correct model so the first 70 percent will go to train the model uh, and the rest um, uh, 30 percent will be used to to make uh, uh, to, to check if our uh, training is correct or not. Uh, so let's do the same thing for see here that this is not working so probably this is not the way we should use it. Uh, then let's see with the Canon model it seems it's working then three random pores gradient boosting let's take it over here and linear digestion, beta boost, curve fit, it's not working so we'll take it over, take it away, and here in neural networks that's a gradient. So you see here that we have this test and score for now, everything is trained and then we just need to see uh, what's our score. Okay, so after the training is done, we just click in here. Let's see the result. We click on the R square to see what is which one is the best. Uh, you see here that linear regressions scores 0 0.6, like 60% is closer than the others to one. For now, what I like to do is that I just remove the ones that are really far from our goal. So SVM, we can say constant tree and KNN. So SVM this this one three and this one. So we end up with six for now. Let's go back to test the score. Um, so it's up for you to go to its uh, classifier right now and trying to improve it somehow. So let's start with neural network so we keep this open we put it on the left side and then we open neural network so let's see here what we can we can change we have no clue how this is working so we don't change the neurons or everything so what we can do this logistics so you see that this is 0 0.5 if we go and change it I see that there are four options so I go to the first one but I remember that it was 0 0.5 neural network over here Let's see what will happen. So neural network is immediately 0 0.6. So that means this is better. Uh, if we go to Jan 8, let's see if it's better than 0 We get less we get 0 0.44 so let's say we go back to this identity we'll do the same thing with solver over here we assume that those numbers we, we don't know what is each one so let's use another solver see if neural network will be uh, still not better 0 0.55 if we use adam solver Zero point fifty four, so still not better than the previous. So if we use that thing here, but we have no clue what it is, and then you can play with regularization a bit. Maybe you find the optimal R square. Okay, but let's assume that we do this for everyone. Let's, let's go to gradient boosting. We have another example. Go back here. You see here that this is cat boosts right now. 
and 0.54 there are squares so we can use secret learn let's see if it's better 0.55 it's better and it was faster than neural network as you can see if we go to xg boost it's less 0 0.53 if we go to extreme gradient XG boost, random forest xg boost let's see um, it's much less and then if we go to god boost It's the best we can find 0 0.6. So we optimize it somehow. You can play with numbers, but I mean, this is the main. The if you don't have knowledge how the uh, what its classifiers is doing, it just doesn't change a lot. So just go with this 0 0.6. Let's see. So we after that we try to uh, correct all those. We see that linear regression and neural network are the best. So in the end, we keep either you can keep them there because when you have more training data. Um, you can use other um, classifiers, you see which one scores the best and then use it. Um, and the last thing we can do is that we need to test on the test data before we, we did the cross-validation with this 70%. But now you need to test it on the test data and see if the numbers are around the same. So if they are around 0 0.6, that means the training with our predictions are... are are correct. So you see that it's 0 0.6 and 0 0.6. So our test on like um, unknown data uh, had the same results. So this is our goal. That means there is no overtraining, or you know you don't have any feature inside that is like more predictive um, than the other shouldn't be there. Uh, so if we go back to cross validation, we can just um, only use for now in order to make it faster and easier we can just take away this ADA boost gradient boosting random forest and static gradient and stay with those two linear regression and neural network let's suppose that we have something that we like over here what we can do is we can come in here and save the model let's save the model into our desktop let's make it a uh, let's say line we're trying to predict the line here and it's going to be a pk cls like a pico file um, and then we can do the same thing over here so we just copy this we have the same edit domain so we take the same thing but the columns now have to be different so the same exactly features but the thing that we want to predict is the total. Uh, so yeah, the data sample are the same, everything is the same. Let's see the testing score here. It's 0 0.97. Really, really good. So the closer to one, the better. And we need to save the model as total, let's say. And I repeat, this is uh, an example. It's not something that uh, you should use, but probably this is going to be it's going to give you better predictions of like 90% of the people that are out there and the services that are out there. Uh, okay, then we say we can say that thing over here with a name we can say as uh, training. And then we can open a new file. We need to import. Uh, we need to import. Let's say. In the first file over here. Now we need to fix like a prediction file. Okay, so up to now we had like um, training data. So this is the, fo the file that I downloaded from the group sheet. So I need to open it and make prediction data. So what we need to do here is we need to delete the slicer, uh, then come here uh, to the score. Uh, we only want the blank values. So 
I click there and we need to delete the rest of it and we'll only keep the blank values delete draw uh, then clear the filter so then we clean we delete those rows and here is our uh, training uh, our prediction data we need to predict all those numbers so let's see those are today's uh, matches let's see if we if we get anything so I save this and then we need to open this uh, new orange file as we said and we need to find this new file that we built it was this one for our predictions um, okay so we need to do the exact same thing we need to have edit domain those are correct line way everything looks correct here we need to select the columns and the same numbers here same features the only thing that we need to have we need to have the line as well so uh, so what we need to do we need to go back to the excel file and create this target again so let's do it here on the right side it was real margin and then it was real So if we save this again and then we go back here we need to reload it and you see here that we have real margin and real cutter so if we go back there there and then the select columns we need to take those away and only use the real margin for now and in the line of course so we can uh, compare those so we need to find a way to load the model that we saved before with this uh, save model so we click here uh, if we double click here we go to desktop and here you see this one that we saved it line before uh, and then we can do maybe the same thing uh, with total model maybe you can change the name if you want it to load line so you remember and this is load uh, total you just select um, and from now what we can do is that we go to predictions um, if you see predictions uh, the line is here but the real margin is nothing so there are no predictions up to now because we need to load the model so the model that has the in for the training data in here is this one so it takes it and then it predicts so you can see here that uh, it was neuronal core, the one that we saved before um, and it gave us that this match over here will be uh, for the home team to win by 3 points, 3 goals or it depends for the sport this is the away team to win by 25 so this is how it predicts and you can see that the line is here so it's really close to the line um, and uh, what we can also do is that we can check what um, the average was for us before so the margin let's go here and find it the margin was zero but now it says three our uh, ai uh, or before it was like minus 13 now it says minus 25 so there is like a difference on that um, 
course that is more predictive because it uses all the stats that we have for now. So this is how you can easily um, use Orange in order to make predictions, everyday predictions. If you have the training data, you came up with the model, and now you use the model, you load it, you load the, the new data that you download, of course, from a Google Sheet, and you get everyday's prediction. Then you compare it with the Lime, and you come up with your number. The same thing, if you go back to Orange, you can do it, um, so let's just copy those, if you press Ctrl D, it just copies the exact same as it was. And we put it in here, we select the columns, we take away the margin, we put the total in here, we don't want the line, we put the line for the total, and then we just load the training uh, model, the train model, and we get predictions for the total. So the line was 138, and the neural network gives us 153, as you see here. But you can go back to your um, training orange uh, file, and instead of neural network, you can come with linear regression, or you can have two models, or and, and like take coverage of two models. You can make, you can see what works for you and what doesn't work. So this is how you do it. This is how you predict the line and you predict the total. Um, and then uh, after like uh, thousands of predictions, uh, you can like make an analysis in Excel and say uh, whenever the difference is uh, sport is let's say basketball and the difference is over seven points, then you have like 60% of winning or 70% of winning. So. This is how you you can do your analysis and make like um, better decisions in betting. So this was for today. Uh, I hope this helped. Uh, I'm sure um, many of you wanted to use it because uh, in Twitter this like uh, the number one question I got: How we can use Orange? We're not good in using Python. So I hope it helped. Uh, shoot me with questions. Um, hope uh, you start winning. I know many of you do it, so uh, good luck.